sale of the day. 20 quid. 20 quid for an old newspaper. No, that wasn't just any old newspaper, Ron. That was the Daily Express, 8th of December, 1941. Japs attack USA. Now, that man was buying a little piece of history. And I'm down to my last half dozen. Pity. <laughs> Still, never mind. It's Malta getting its George Cross next month. That is bound to be a seller. I reckon I can make a bomb out of that. Hardly an appropriate choice of phrase. Considering the bombardment which led to that plucky little island's award. What was it? A thousand raids, seven a day. The capital devastated and the population forced to live underground. That's right. Sell like hotcakes. <laughs> You're a deeply caring individual, aren't you, Gary? Well, I like to think so, Ron. Just a thought, but don't you ever suffer from qualms of conscience? You know, nipping back into World War II, bulk buying newspapers and then selling them for an extortion of profit on your return. What? The guilty finger points. Do you, Gary Sparrow, admit to making money out of other people's misery? Well, only if you, Ron Wheatcroft, plead guilty to the same charge for printing bankruptcy sale notices and promotional leaflets for the latest Take That tour. Well, that's different. No, it's not. What happened in the war wasn't my fault. I'm just the messenger. What I bring back doesn't change the message. I'm forging a link with the past, keeping it alive, so as future generations will never forget what happened all those years ago, how all those people suffered. And I'm... You're making a cheap book out of it. <laughs> I've got to do it, Ron. I need to show a profit with this place. If I do that, I keep Yvonne off my back because she is still going on at me about getting a job at her place, you know, Sim Young or Dim Sun or whatever it's called. Hurrah, everybody. <laughs> what? Hurrah, everybody. <laughs> well, yes, if you're implying that Yvonne wants me to get a job with her Korean employers, you're absolutely right. You don't want to. It's going to mess things up, isn't it? I'm doing okay at the moment. Life, just for once, is going according to plan. If I get a job at Yvonne's place, I've got to work nine till five. I'll never be able to see Phoebe, and I won't be, be able, able to... to make the occasional sojourn into that fun-filled pleasure dome we've come to call World War II. <laughs> so what do you want me to do? Go back to 1942, work my way to Berlin, find the bunker and shoot Adolf? It's an idea, why not? Because we know it didn't happen, Ron, that's why not. Read the books, there's enough of them. As far as the publishing world is concerned, World War II is still a bigger seller than the Princess of Wales. And with that, our time-travelling Rupert Murdoch is off again. Yes. I haven't seen Phoebe all week. And it's March the 11th. Meaning? Surrender of Java. Oh, that old rib tickler! <laughs> when after some of the bloodiest jungle fighting in the whole of World War II, a small group of British ak ak gunners turned infantrymen fought to the last man in a vain attempt to save the airfield. Ron, if not buying newspapers would bring back one of those people, I wouldn't touch them. Just lighten up, will you? Go on, do the voice again. Hurrah, lovely body. <laughs> yeah, well, while I'm gone, just remember, it was racial stereotyping that started World War II off. I said they'll be in tomorrow. <laughs> you daft old man. Oh, morning, sir. I had a feeling we'd be seeing you today. As soon as I saw Java had gone, I said to the missus, our mystery man will be in, I said. Really? Yeah. The missus was wondering who you was. Well, I said, it's none of ours, is it? And she said, well, there is a war on and you can't be too careful about... <coughs> I took the precaution of putting up the usual quantities. Oh, that's in order, sir. Perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. Will you be uh, wanting an Acme Gazette? I've only got a couple left this week. Been selling like hot cakes, they have. Not that you can get hot cakes nowadays, of course. <laughs> Never known such a rush on them. Must be page three. <laughs> page three? Yeah. A bit about the local hero escaping the eye ties. Donald Bamford, you know, from the Royal Oak. Mm -hmm. Change. One, two, three. Uh, Oi! Your papers, sir! <sighs> if he's intelligent, God help us. <laughs> I repeat, for the hard of hearing and the mentally impaired, Donald has come back. Donald! Phoebe's Donald! Phoebe's husband, Donald! Which Donald do you think I was talking about? Donald Trump? Donald Beaton? Donald Duck? All right, keep your hair on. Well, as Uncle Ron sees, who's Donald Beaton? It's the bloke I went to school with. <laughs> All right. Well, as Uncle Ron sees it, a spanner of rather immense proportions has been thrown into what we have come to call the works. 
Well, you figured that one out all by yourself, did you, Ron? I have my moments. I thought he was in the prisoner of war camp. He was. He escaped. Ah. Talking vaulting horses, are we? Bags of dirt concealed in the trousers. Massed choirs of British Tommies rending the air to disguise the sound of underground digging. It's the great escape. Do you remember that bit of Steve McQueen on his motorbike? I'm afraid the truth is a tad more prosaic than that one. They were transferring Donald to one of the islands and his ship got torpedoed. The Royal Navy picked him up. What, no forged papers? No Donald Pleasance going blind and trying to pick a pin up from the other side of the room? <laughs> well, we're talking about real life here. Yes, yes, I do have a tendency to forget that sometimes. Still, we are talking about a hero. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bloke who got called up, went away and fought for his country, got captured, escaped. Hmm, yeah, please fill the blank. I mean, a working class bloke. He gets called up, separated from his wife and family, goes away to fight, gets captured, gets put in a prisoner of war camp. Yeah, and I wish he'd bloody well stayed there. <laughs> God, what a terrible thing to say. Do I detect a note of bitterness? Ron, I love Phoebe so much. And now it's all gone, hasn't it? It's over. Not at all. Come on, pal, look at the facts. You love Phoebe and Phoebe loves you, right? Yeah, so... Well, the only problem, glitch, let's call it a glitch. And a glitch is better than a problem? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the only glitch, the only glitch on the horizon is that Phoebe's husband has come back and will want to resume married life with her. We can get round that. <laughs> yeah? How? All we need is a plan. <laughs> a plan. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, so what sort of plan? Two years in the prisoner of war camp. It's a long time to go without... Go without what? Well, you know, you'll want to make up for lost time. Yeah, but get round it, Ron. You said we could get round it. Yes, 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 we can. Well, that's a fascinating... What would you call one of Ron, these? Ron, Ron, the plan. Yes. It's a bit tricky, really. You see, there's you in 1996, married to Yvonne, and there's Phoebe and her husband in 1942. Yeah, right, so how do we get round that? Wasn't The Great Escape a brilliant film? <laughs> bit when James Coburn's in the cafe and the French resistance come. Ron, you don't know how to get round this, do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> I just need to work on the details. Just tiny things. I'll see you later. 9.30 tomorrow morning. Have you got that, Gary? 9.30. 9.30 tomorrow morning at Hatfield. I've got it, I've got it. What time? 7.30 next Thursday. Oh, Gary! 9.30 tomorrow morning at Hatfield. Well, you put your best suit over the back of the sofa. And don't use that aftershave your mum bought you for Christmas. I like that aftershave. Gary, you're going for an interview with a top Korean company. If you get this job, you'll be working amongst men who wear Armani and Paul Smith. Men who exude a certain air of sophistication. I'm not having you walk into that reception area smelling like a Turkish brothel. Who's Paul Smith? You're wearing his boxers. Am I? Well, does he know? Shouldn't we tell him? <laughs> Serious thing. If this works out, we will be living together, working together, earning good money. We might be able to save up enough to have a baby. Yeah. Tell me again, how much do they cost these days? For once in our lives, Gary, we'll be ahead of the game. You do want this job, don't you? Well. Oh, you're not going to chicken out on me now, are you? No, it's just. Well, the shop's doing okay, you know. All right, so it's never going to be the MS of memorabilia, but it's paying its way. And, well, is working together such a good idea? You know, in each other's pockets the whole time. Mr. and Mrs. Corporate. Nothing to talk about over dinner except who said what to who. Look. Look, Gary, the stuff that you're selling in the shop, it's not going to last forever, you know. It's old stuff. It's going to run out. I mean, you can't just pop back in town and buy some more when you need it. <laughs> Come on, Gary, this is a chance into management with a very go-ahead company. It's a gold-plated ladder to the top. I know, I know. I've heard it all before. Well, obviously you weren't listening. This is for us, Gary. You and me. Doesn't that mean anything anymore? Yeah, yeah, I suppose you're right. Got to think about the future, eh? No good living in the past. Donald. How long have you been standing there? Just now, I've just got a... Oh. Uh, sorry I slept in. Oh, no, that's all right. Um, you need it after what you've been through. Yeah, yeah you're showing a bit of leg just then, up on that ladder. <laughs> well, you're my husband. Uh, seen my legs before. Got more besides. Yeah, uh... Phoebe, I'm sorry about last night, you know, when I couldn't, when I was tired. It's all right, Donald. Um, these things take time, there's no rush. 
After all, it's two years, a lot can happen in two years, I mean, things change. Yeah, yeah. But do you mind if I run a bath? I dreamt about lying in that bath for ages. Tried to picture every crack in the ceiling. I was in a prisoner war camp. We had to make do with showers. Showers? Mm. How horrible. These backward countries, they don't like you. <laughs> well, I'll see you in a bit then, eh? You've got to spruce yourself up for your big night. All your family's going to be here. Be a right knees up. Yeah. Look at you two lovebirds. Can't keep your hands off each other. Make that for lost time, eh? Yeah, you said it, Reg. That's right, isn't it, sweetheart? Yeah. Yeah, here, I think I might go for that bath. I need to relax. Relax? I bet you need to relax. Oh, I should have another kit if I was you. Whoa, say another kit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Reg. Yeah, never close my eyes. Yeah, I think you might have to buy another bed. The old one's worn out. Don't you? are my wife, aren't you? Buy another bed. That's a good one. Reg. Oh, well, I mean, you've got to expect it of the bloke. It's only natural, isn't it? Reg. I mean, two years. It's a long time for a bloke to wait for his conjugal rights. And I know it. Reg, <laughs> could you please bring me up some more light ales? What, yo? Oh, Gary. So it's true. You've heard. Gary, I'm so confused. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, we were all right before, but... <coughs> Reg. I know, I know. More like ales. Phoebe, listen. It's no good. It's all wrong now. We can't leave this with her. Of course we can. We can't. Look, Donald is your husband, right? And he's come home. Yeah. Donald's my husband and he's come home. There's nothing more to say, is there? He's not going to leave, Gary. He won't be here forever. But he's still your husband, Phoebe. We can't change that. This is his home. It would be wrong. So this is goodbye, then, is it, Gary? <coughs> Reg! I'm all finished in the cellar. All oh, right. Well, goodbye, then, Gary. Phoebe? So boys, we'll be okay. Phoebe, I will always remember you. Come on, Phoebe, girl. All hands to the pumps. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Gary. Right. We can't say goodbye like this. Oh, shut up. Look, come tonight. We can say goodbye properly. And don't you even think about it. So it's goodbye then, darling. Yes, darling. Hey, Dolly. Hey, Dolly. You all right? Oh, God, what a day. I sent the fax through to our soul office. And 30 minutes later, they sent me a fax saying, when are we going to get the fax we were expecting? Of course, I have to do the whole thing again. Right, I'm off to my gym class. There's a shepherd's pie in the fridge. You can't microwave it. Just put it in the oven. I'm going to smart for 30 minutes. Right, I'm off. See you back now. Bye, Dolly. Oh, sorry. Good day at work? We just talked about that. Have you? I think so. Yes, I'm sure I have. What's the matter? Nothing. I've just been sitting here thinking about life and stuff. Stuff? What sort of stuff? The future. Oh, you're not worried about this interview tomorrow, are you? No, no. You do want this job, don't you? I went to a lot of trouble to set it up. I'll look really bad if you let me down. No, I do want the job. That's what I was thinking about. The future. Just you and me, isn't it? Well, it's always been that way, hasn't it? Just the two of us? Yeah, of course. Right. I'll be back about nine. We'll have an early night when I get back. Well, I'm yeah? not really that tired, so... Oh, that sort of early night. Yeah, you got it in one. Yeah, yeah, I like that sort of early night. So do I. And it's going to be a great future, Gary. For the two of us. Oh, shut up. <laughs> right, and then, according to the plan, what you do next is... Yes. Sorry, Ron, getting a little bit confused here. Can we just backtrack? Now, according to the plan, I go to the Royal Oak and tell everybody that I'm from the planet Zircon, which is 300 light-years away. 200. It's 200 light-years away. 
It's more believable. <laughs> and then you say, I've come to claim Phoebe as my rightful bride so that we can roam the universe together for the rest of our lives. And then what do I do? Then you grab Phoebe's hand, run out of the Royal Oak and get into your spaceship and off you go. <laughs> I never said it was going to be a good plan. That is a fascinating object. Keep it. Keep the lot. I'm getting rid of the shotgun. I'll burn all this stuff when I come back. I could try and flog it, I suppose, but... Nah. Too many memories. Hey, come on, pal. Ron, you cannot expect me to sit in there every day knowing that Phoebe is 100 yards away. It's a bit of a blow here, there's no football. Well, we hit the odd friendly at Wembley, but there's no league games. They've been cancelled till the war's over. Yeah, well, when I was in the camp, me and the lads used to make up league tables. No, we thought the season was going. Still, you're back home now. Yeah. Yeah, we played some great football in the camp. D-block, that was my block, right? We was champions, two years running. Don't you worry. All that's behind you. You're back with Phoebe now. Soon be hearing the patter of tiny feet, eh? I've got no time for that. Just got back, haven't I? You're a hero, son. That's what you are. A hero. Hello. All right, mate, you want to play? Come on, yeah. Uh, no, thanks, I'm not staying. That's fair enough. Here we had some great boxing matches in the camp. It was this bloke from c right? Huge, great big bloke he was. See you, Ingrid? I didn't think you'd show your face tonight. Meaning? Meaning it's not your night, is it? It's Donald's night. Donald and Phoebe. Oh, come on, Terry. I like you. I really do. You know that. We read some interesting chats. Yeah, yeah, of course we have. Yeah, do you remember the time I told you about my water heater backing up? 1932 model it was, and the bloke down the depot said the particular part I needed to fix it was a D37 stroke 940. I remember it, I remember. Yeah, of course you do. Funny. Right. I was in the middle of telling you about it. I was just getting to the interesting bit, and you shouted out something about an air raid siren and went running out into the street. Reg, I'm going back. What, the Mrs. Blossies? A bit further than that. Oh. So, this is goodbye then. Well, it's all for the best. Yeah, you've been a good friend to me. And you've been a good friend to Phoebe. Uh, forget my drift. Oh, come on, Gary, it's all for the best. Got your hair, got a nice pair of shoulders on you, got your music. You'll find someone else. Yeah. How about a farewell drink? This one is on me. You have whatever you want. As long as it's not short, and the bit is running out, so I'll be obliged if you have half a mild. <laughs> I'll have half a mild. Sure, because you can have whatever you want, apart from... No, no, half a mild will be fine. Half a mile coming up. Where's Phoebe? She'll be out in a minute. Putting on her face upstairs. Making herself look pretty for Donald. Right, Donald, ready for that pint of bitter? Ready when you are, Reg. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Phoebe. I'm glad to be back and everything. It's just had some good times in the camp. Yeah, football, boxing, talking. I miss the talking most. It weren't like women talking about plants and cooking and stuff like that. Yeah, it was men's talk. That's right, Reg. Men's talk. Proper talk. Important issues. Yeah. Meaningful issues. Got it in one, Reg. Stuff that women just wouldn't understand. Yeah, have I shown you my tattoo? <laughs> you look lovely in that dress. Donald will be proud of you. I'm not wearing this for Donald. So you come to say goodbye. Phoebe, I'm going to miss you so much. Come on, Gary. I mean, there must be some way around this. Couldn't I come and see you? That's impossible. Well, you just take care of yourself, Gary Sparrow. Send me a letter or a postcard now and then. Let me know how you're getting on, yeah? Yeah, I will. I'll really try. And just remember, eh? Just remember. Phoebe, please don't get upset. Well, you're upset. Why can't I get upset? All right. All right, we'll both be upset. Look, you've got Donald now. Oh, will you shut up about Donald? I don't love Donald, and he doesn't love me, and you know it. If his auntie hadn't kept chickens, none of this would have happened. Pardon me? He used to keep chickens in her backyard, right? And my dad used to send me round there to buy eggs off her. Still not much clearer, Phoebe. So one day I'm round there and Donald's sitting there having his tea and he 
He's got his shirt off and his auntie says to me, sit down, Phoebe, say hello to Donald, Phoebe, have a slice of carrot cake, Phoebe. And to be absolutely honest, Gary, I am not a big fan of carrot cake. I prefer a slice of Battenberg yeah, myself. Yeah, well, to cut a long story short. Yeah, well, to cut a long story short, Donald's family thought we'd make a good match. And uh, I wanted to get away from Dad. And before either of us knew it, we were walking down the aisle together. And then the war started. Donald volunteered, got captured. And I could have gone through with it, Gary. I could have. I mean, he'd have come home, we'd have had kids. We'd have gone to Margate every year. We'd have had our little arguments, but... But then I turn up. Yeah. And I am ever so glad you did, Gary. <laughs> oh, God, Reg, please, not now. Phoebe. Come on, please. Get out there. Now. All right, all right. So you're going to beat me up. But you better know first that Phoebe and I love each other and there is nothing you can do about that. You can break my legs, you can break my arms. Or you could give me a black eye. Yeah, a, a black eye. Or, or a really nasty slap, you know, that would really sting. <laughs> Donald? I, I can't do it, mate. Can't do it. <laughs> it's not our fault. I had this auntie, you see. The one who kept chicken? Yeah, I yes, sir. Well, <laughs> you didn't have any say in the matter. She told me. I had plans, you know, before I had to get married. Me and my mate Steve, we was going to go to Australia. Yeah, they've got kangaroos there, you know? Yeah? Yeah, they have, honest. I read about them in the library. They've got these farms that go on forever. So that's what we was going to do. Me and Steve, before I got into this marriage lot. I was going to work on one of them farms. Probably could have stayed there for the rest of our lives. What happened to Steve? His mum wrote me a letter. He was in the POW camp. He got killed in the North Africa campaign. Got a bit broken up about that. Don't mind telling you, mate. Hard work. Hard work getting over that, mate. Funny. I was coming here on the train. Pulled into the station, there's this big crowd there. I thought I saw him. Just for a second, his, his face. I, I thought I saw his face. It couldn't have been him, could it? I wouldn't have thought so. No. No, I thought not. I thought not. So, you love Phoebe, do you? Yes, I do. Phoebe. When I was in a camp, I used to lay awake at night and think of her face. I do that. You are serious. You're not messing her about. Absolutely. Good. As if you were, I'd have to come back and kill you. Where are you going? Back to my regiment. Got a couple of weeks' leave left, but I don't know. I'm not one for Simby Street. And all this marriage lark, I just can't get the hang of it. Look, clear it with Phoebe, will you? It's not that I don't love her, I do. I, I really like her. It's just me. Maybe there's something wrong with me. No. No, there's not. Listen, Donald, um... Will you take care now, eh? Yeah. yeah. What's the matter? You some sort of pansy or something? <laughs> just mind how you go. Yeah. Donald, please, I've been meaning to talk to you. Just a couple of minutes, will you, mate? It's all right. It's a good nap, that bloke. Yeah, he is. Take proper care of you and everything. Fuck. Oh, come on, Phoebe. It's never going to work out, is it? <laughs> Brother and sister. That's what me and you should be. You're not eating a blame the chickens, eh? <laughs> He's gone. Got a bit on the side, hasn't he, Gary? No. If ever he loved a woman, it was you. So where does that leave us? Back the way we were, I suppose. Oh, yeah. 
What, with me not knowing when you're going to shout and you dashing off all of a sudden? It won't be like that forever. No? No. Okay. But I do have to go now. Look, Phoebe, tomorrow morning I have to be in Hatfield at 9.30. It's a very important... briefing. Yeah, well, that is in the morning, Gary. It's hours away. I've never asked you this before, but... I really need you to stay with me tonight. Especially now. Now it's... Now it's what? Well, now it really is just the two of us, isn't it? Yeah. It's ten o'clock. Okay. 